Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is about my motherboard project here. Um, what I've done is I've modularized my entire project. So I'm going to kind of talk about the whole thing start to finish. So if you've seen my other videos, you're going to see a lot of familiar parts here. But I'm going to break it down here. So. What I've done is I took my regular motherboard and I squished it down and I removed the processor, the latches, and the data transceiver and I removed the memory and I put them on these cards. So my motherboard, it has kind of the essentials. So I've got a clock on it. And what this clock is for is the ISA bus. There's an oscillate and a click pin. And I've got a crystal here, and it's that 14.31818 crystal to provide the correct pins, the frequencies for the pins here. And then I've also put the keyboard controller and the USB hard drive here. And because I had to decode for the keyboard controller, I've got my decoders here, and it, it decodes for the uh, USB as well. And then you've got port 60 here. So, what I've done is I made a kind of an expansion slot. This is not 16-bit ISA. This is just regular 8-bit, and this is a 8-pin, so 16-pin total, expansion slot, and I put it behind the first slot here, so this would be your processor slot. And I went with 16 pins. The main, the main thing is I needed to get IRQ1 down for the keyboard here, and I also needed to get the reset pin from the power supply to the processor. So I could have made this like two pins total, but... I was thinking, let's try to save parts. So I actually added, with the decoding here, the ports for the uh, interrupt controller and the system timer are decoded here. So I want to say port, this is not an exact pinout, but port 0, port 20, port 40, port 60, port 80, coming up there. So the other thing here is it's set up for the DMA controller as well with the port. On the other side, I've got some hold, hold acknowledge as well that come across. So some things that were not standard on the ISA bus I've added to my little expansion slot here. And the main reason why I took the memory off the motherboard is so that you can change the, the size. I've had a lot of uh, questions on adding 640K versus 512. Uh, so I, mine still uses 512, but we could turn this into a 640 real easy. And then with the processor, the biggest thing here is I only have one project now. And now I can plug in my 8088. So this is your V40. This is the 8088. And so this is all the stuff, minus these three, which you can see, that have to be added to equal the V40. And this way I don't have two motherboards, one 8088 and one V40. I just have one motherboard and you just select which processor you want to plug in. And as you can see, there's no decoding on this board because the decoding is down here on the motherboard. Um, so I'm gonna put it together. I can demo the V40 and the 8088 um, that works with both the VGA and a CGA card. I'll just demo the v, uh, VGA. I guess I haven't really, the speaker's on here, that probably hasn't changed. Now my speaker is not perfect, it's something that probably needs to be improved on, but it does work. Got a power button and a reset button, and this, it locks in and out, and you can lock, you can leave it out, and you could actually run, there's a pin header here for a toggle switch. I removed the pin header for the reset, and I did add a jumper for the IRQ6, which I use with my USB. So you can remove that jumper and not use 
that IRQ, which I think in the code right now it's not being used at all. So I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna put it together. I'll start with the V40 and then I'll demo the V or the well, it's actually a V20, so the 8088. All right, so I've got it all put together here. Now I have tested it in a case, and it fits in just fine. The screw holes line up just fine. So and I have it out here, out of the case, just for the demo and testing purposes. I've had pretty good success with most VGA cards. Even, you can see it's hanging out the 16-bit, it's fine. Now let's boot it up. Now I'm not going to really demo the software too much. It's just DOS. It's just booting up. Now this BIOS is not the one I wrote. This is the um, BIOS. It's kind of a third-party BIOS. Um, the guy basically took uh, off-the-shelf open-source BIOS and added the code to boot the USB drive from this CH376. And... He also added the code to initialize the V40. So you can see it booted up to the DOS prompt. See. And it works. So I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to pull out the V40 card. Put our V20 8088 card in. Now with this BIOS, it's got to be a V20. Uh, that's one thing about his BIOS is he... Uh, Put some 186 code in there. So an 8088 will run with his BIOS. Now my BIOS will run an 8088, but my BIOS is only good for a CGA card. And his will read and write to the USB drive, where mine is currently uh, read only. So this is running a little slower. Um, the crystal I put in is just a regular 14.31818. So it's running slower than the V40. The V40 has a 16 megahertz, and the V40 divides it in half, where this one's the 8088 is dividing it in thirds. So that is something I should point out. Um, with the crystal, it's right here. I could have used the uh, clock off the uh, ISA bus, but I went ahead and put a separate clock on the card here. You can see that there. Yeah, so I put a separate clock on the card here, and that is so that you can put a faster clock and still have the correct speeds on the ISA bus with that ISA clock. So like this one here is a 10 megahertz V20. So you'd have to get the correct configuration of crystal and clock. So you got your 8284 clock, but they also have a 71011 that's a neck. And this one divides your crystal by thirds. The neck divides it in half. So if I got the neck clock on there and a 20 megahertz crystal, then they could run this at 10 megahertz. So that's the main purpose of the uh, extra clock. So, anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me or leave a comment. Uh, well, thanks for checking out my video today.